Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain on types of base sands and properties of molding sands. So let us start with a uh, mold materials. So a mold materials is one out of which the mold is to be made. So basically a mold material should be such that the mold cavity retains its shapes till the molten metal has to be solidified. So after solidification process, some secondary process is to be performing and converting into desired shape and size. So the castings can be made in, in the form of permanent molds. So in case of the permanent molds of the ferrous metals and alloys, which is made with the steels or grey cast iron materials. Second one, that will be the temporary refractory molds. So in the case of the refractory molds, that will be made of refractory sands and a resins. So basically, in case of the permanent molds are normally employed for castings with low melting point of the materials. So in case of the permanent molds are too costly and that will be used for a mass productions. For above mentioned reasons, most of the foundry industries has its castings producing with refractory mold materials like refractory sands. And you can say that will be the temporary refractory molds. So as compared to the permanent molds, the refractory sand molds can be cast high melting point of the materials as well as the bigger size of the objects. Whereas the permanent molds producing small size of the castings and that will be having a better quality with a good dimensional accuracy. So if you want to work for a mass production with the small size of the jobs, so that will be most preferable as a permanent mold that will be made with a steel or grey cast iron. But if you work for a large size of the cast job, so the most suitable that will be a temporary refractory molds. Now we will discussing with types of base sands. So the primary and the basic materials used for preparing mold is sand and due to its high refractoriness. So the good refractoriness that will be present into the sands, that's why it will be using for making a mold. So sand usually referred to a base sand. Nearly 90 to 95 percentage of total molding sand, which is occupied by sand and the remaining part that will be with the help of binder or additives. So the basic types of the base sands are given below. First that will be a silica sand. Second one, chromite sand. Third, zircon or you can say zirconium. Last one, olivine sand. Now we will discussing in details with a silica sand. So basically, silica sand is essentially silicon dioxide or you can say SiO2, which is found into a nature onto the bottoms as well as onto a banks of the rivers, lakes and seashore. So that will be easily available into open market and by the nature. So the silica deposit tends to have a varying degree of organic and contaminants like limestone, magnesia, soda and potash. So that must be removed prior to its use. So some of the process that will be carried out for removing such kind of contaminants. Otherwise, which will be affect the castings into the number of ways. So silica sand is available in plenty with less expensive and processes the favorable properties as a refractoriness. Then the thermal expansion leads to certain casting defects, the reason for which not being used into the steel foundries. However, the silica sand were mixed with a certain additives like wood floor, corn floor or you can say sore dust etc. So by the addition of such kind of additives, so for the addition of such kind of materials like uh, additive materials, so the defects can be eliminated or you can say reduce. These additives burns by a heat of the molten metal, thereby creating voids that can be accommodate the sand expansions. So that will be the disadvantages of this mixture. Now we will discussing for second one and that will be olivine sand. So olivine sand is typically used into a non-ferrous foundries with its thermal expansions about half of the silica sand. 
so makes it suitable for productions into the steel castings. But the higher cost of the sands that will be restrict the use into the foundry. Because of by the using of the olivine sands that will be increasing the total cost of the cast product. Third one, chromite sand. So this is known as an African sand, which cost being much higher compared to the all other sands. So due to its superior thermal characteristics, it is generally used into the steel foundries for both mold as well as for the core making. So basically, core that will be used for making a hollow castings into the foundry process. Then zircon or you can say zirconium silicate. So this sand processes most stable thermal properties of all above the sands. The choice of this kind of sands arises when very high temperature are encountered and refractoriness becomes a consideration. So at that time we are most preferable that sand it will be known as a zircon. But the major disadvantage is that zircon has trace elements of uranium as well as thorium which is hazardous in nature thereby restricts its use into the foundries. So that will be the major disadvantages of such kind of sense. Now we will discussing with the properties of molding sands. So basically a very important characteristics of the molding sand is that it should be producing sound castings. For doing so, the molding sand should process certain desirable properties and they are first one good flowability, second green strength, then dry strength, hot strength, then permeability, porousness or you can say porousness into the sand, refractoriness, adhesiveness, then collapsibility, fineness, bench life, coefficient of expansion and finally good durability. So these all are the properties it will be present into a molding sand. Now we will discussing in details of the properties of the molding sand. So let us start with the first one flowability. So flowability is the ability of the molding sand to get complicated to uniform density. Flowability assist molding sand to flow and pack all around the patterns and take up the required shape. So by the application of the good flowability of the sands, it will be occupying the space around the pattern and after removal of the dead patterns, it will be making a mold cavity. So good flowability increases as clay and the water contains that will be added. Second one, green strength. So it is the strength of the sand in a green or you can say moist state or you can say moist conditions. So a mold having adequate green strength will retain its shape, will not distort, will not collapse even after the pattern has been removed from the molding box and that will be the essential condition for a sand molding process. Green strand helps in making as well as handling the molds. So if you want to move that particularly sand molds from one place to another place, so that will be easily you can performing by this green strength. Third one, dry strength. So it is the strength of the molding sand into a dry conditions. So a mold may either intentionally be dried or a green stand mold may lose its moisture and get dried while waiting for a getting poured or when it comes in contact with a molten metal is to be poured. So there will be the some cases like it will be dried by itself or you can say green sand that will be lost its moisture otherwise it will be in contact with the higher temperature molten form of the metal. So that will be having a dry strength. The sand thus dried must have strength to withstand uh, erosive forces due to the molten matter it will be passing through it, withstand pressure of the molten metal and it will be retained in its original shape. 
that's why it will be making a good dimensional accuracy there should be an optimum balance when dry strand and collapsibility of a molding sand so you need to balance both that things what that will be the dry strand as well as collapsibility the next hot strand so it is the strand of the sand above 212 degree fahrenheit so in the absence of the adequate hot strand the mold may be enlarged or sometimes it will be break eroded or you can say it get crack then next one permeability or porousness or you can say porosity so the moisture binders and additives present into the mold sands the core producing steam and other gases though much these gases escape through the vents as well as from the riser or you can say open feeder heads yet a good amount of the same tends to be passed up through the pore spaces of the molding sands so that will be help for escaping such kind of gases by the pouring of the molten metal into a cavity thus to provide a path or can say free escape of the gases the molding sand should be permeable or you can say porous sands which are coarse or you can say into the bigger size or having round grains exhibit more permeability so such kind of shape of the sand that will be essential for increasing the permeability into a mold casting soft ramming and clay additions in lesser amount also improves the permeability so as per the by requirements of the additions of the particularly clay binders so according to that you should add it to maintain the good poros porosity or you can say permeability in the absence of adequate permeability defects like surface blow gas holes mold blast etc may be experienced then refractoriness it is the ability of the molding sand to withstand high temperatures without fusion cracking buckling and experiencing and major physical changes as compared to the castings of the low melting point alloys refractoriness is much more essential in the production of high melting point of the alloys or you can say castings then collapsibility collapsibility is that property of the molding sand which is determines the readiness with which the molding sand or can say mold so automatically gets collapse after the casting solidify so for the removal of the cast products that kind of characteristics of the collapsibility it will be present so that will be only possible after it will be solidified that will be the essential conditions breaks down into the knockout and cleaning operations if the mold or you can say core does not collapse so it may be restrict the free contractions of the solidified metal and causes the same to tear or cracks fineness finer sand molds resist metal penetrations and producing smooth casting surfaces fineness and permeability are in conflict with each other hence they must be balanced for a optimum results so you should take care about both the things and both the things it will be having a importance into a sound casting so you should balance the fineness with a permeability or you can say porosity fineness and permeability both of the properties of the molding sand can be maintaining by using mold coating onto a high permeable mold cavity walls so you should use such kind of things for maintaining the balance then bench life so it is the ability of the molding sand to retain its properties during the storage or you can say while standing so in case of the delays then coefficient of expansion so molding sand should possesses low coefficient of expansion then bench life the molding sand should be processes the capabilities to withstanding repeated cycles of heating and cooling during a casting operations molding sand should be chemically immune to molten metals 
Molding sand should be reusable. That will be also the essential conditions. So I hope you understand this. If you like this, then subscribe and share Modi Mechanical Engineering tutorials. Thank you so much and keep watching.